Uh, joining me, as always, is our friends Chris and Chris, Kristen and Christian. Uh, welcome back. And as we get started, I just want to hit you up with a quick poll, as we usually do. Uh, what level do you teach? Uh, so we can get an idea of who's here in the room today. And then uh, please tell us in the chat. And remember, if you'd like to talk to everybody, we're going to keep reminding you, make sure you hit the toggle to talk to all presenters and attendees and not just the presenters. We, we love seeing what you type, but I'm sure others would love to see it as well. Uh, but if you could tell us in the chat, if your school year is over for you, um, that I actually would love to get a sense of that as well. Um, but now that we are there, uh, Chris, Chris, any, any initial words, any, anything you wanna kick us off with? Uh, Kristen, we can start with you. I'll take that, uh, take that first. Um, yeah, it's nice to see everybody again. I'm, I'm Chris Smyrner. I'm the head of instructional design here at KTP. And um, really, you know, this is not at all what anybody thought was going to start, uh, you know, in January, this was not how anybody thought it was going to end rather. And I think um, everybody has kind of rolled with the punches, so to speak. And, um, you know, it's been a lot of really good conversation we've had here. And I think, um, you know, today we're really looking to kind of start to turn the corner, right? Like this year's kind of winding down. How do you then make some space for yourself so that you can breathe and just go, okay, we did it. And then what are we doing and what are we hearing about the fall? You know, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go. And I just, um, I can't wait to hear from you guys because it's, it seems to be so differential from all the people that we're talking to, you know, even, even in our district. So, you know, we're a little scattered. I'm in Vermont and, uh, and my colleagues here are, are, you know, I'll let them tell you where they are, but, um, but just really interesting to hear the differences in, in, in local and, and state jurisdictions. Yeah. Yeah. And Christian? Uh, yeah, we're here in North Carolina and um, we're distance learning through the rest of the year, uh, as I'm seeing a lot of the folks in chat uh, are saying, um, and uh, some colleges nearby like Duke and UNC, this uh, last weekend was it, was supposed to be the big graduation weekend uh, with, with uh, Mother's Day and that didn't happen in any kind of physical way. So. Um, wherever you are, as we as we come towards the end here, we we really want to take today's uh, session in stages because it's important to see where we are now and we're breathing, so we made it to here. We in some cases still have to get to the finish line and then take some break and then where is next year? So I just want to applaud you all for. Um, you know, you think back to COVID time is somehow really accelerated. And uh, I feel like March, middle of March, when all this was starting to go down, seems like I'm looking through the end of a telescope going back. I, I don't know how you feel, uh, Dennis and Chris, but uh, it's it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Chris. And we see in the chat that uh, for many, it hasn't ended yet. So for most of us, we're talking about uh, ending, as you said, Chris, finding a way to finish strong. Uh, how do we finish on a high note? Uh, so uh, can we talk about that a little? Can we jump into that as our first topic? Um, you know, on my mind are things like, are there capstone projects we've thought about? Or, or maybe even, you know, what has the connection been like with the students and families? Has there been feedback at an individual level? Chris, I know we got a question uh, before this time. Did you, maybe this is a good time to discuss that. Yeah, sure. So um, uh, a really good question came in um, independently uh, from a teacher who is uh, leaving her current school and moving to a different school in the same uh, school district. And Zoom is forbidden. It, it's not allowed. So uh, she was both asking, how do I wrap up with my fifth graders now and tell them sort of end the year gently with them? Uh, and how do I build a classroom community with my, in my new school, uh, with my new students and their families? Um, and taking those in kind of two different, uh, at two different points. First, wrapping up now, one thing that's really key, we've, we heard a, a, a few webinars back from teachers in the field saying, I'm thinking of the, the videos you shot, uh, Chris, where, you know, you miss your students whatever level you're teaching at, you miss physically your students, they miss you. And so conveying through a short video 
record a quick little video that would be you saying goodbye. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard not to maybe even have some tears and things, but your students need to see you uh, saying goodbye. And it's not the same as being face to face or being live uh, on camera, but a video would be the next best thing. And then maybe as a follow up, like Chris Williams said last time, sending physical notes. Um, that's an extra burden, I know, but a quick little note to each student, if possible, sent through the mail would have an extra resonance right now. And then building classroom community, I would say wait on that. Hold off, let yourself wrap this year. And we'll, we'll come back to that question yeah. uh, maybe in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, Kristen, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Any, any additional uh, thoughts here in regards to the closure that maybe some of our students may need to have at the end of this year? Are there ways we can provide that? Yeah, and uh, I had asked in the chat, you know, have you been able to go back into your classrooms, you know, just individually, certainly not with students, but um, I have several friends that have gone back to class and um, shot some video within their classrooms and were surprised at how emotional it made them, you know, that that time kind of stopped, like the, the analog uh, calendars that, you know, like showed the day, you know, for younger kids that, you know, were stopped on March 12th and um, you know, and just little reminders. And I think every single teacher that I know that has had that experience were surprised by how emotional it made them that, it, you know, it, it doesn't feel like it should. And I think honoring that, you know, um, we keep talking about it, but I think initially, you know, the shock was, well, I got to do this. I got to get it online. I got to figure it out. And there was like this adrenaline rush of, of the pivot that happened so quickly. And then, you know, as time has gone on, there's a fatigue with it, right? We see it in the news with people getting upset about having to stay in still and, you know, all of the, all the craziness that, that happens when people are, are forced out of the routines for so long. And so I think, you know, particularly for school districts that still have another month plus left of this, um, really important to think about how you're going to pace that and what can you do to take care of yourself and still look out for your students, but encourage the persistence and engagement. And, you know, if, if your district is not trying to flex with the end of the school year, as some have done, um, you know, really thinking about an action plan, Dennis, I think is important, you know, kind of sitting down and looking at between now and the end of the school year, and I'm sure you've already done it, but, you know, maybe revisiting it with the learnings that you've had over the last couple of months and in doing this, you know, what things can you do to make it more fun or unexpected now that you kind of understand how the days feel, you know, even with the fatigue of the students, even with you're getting, you know, tired of this as well, you know, how can you rally a little bit and make the end of the school year kind of, you know, swoop back up a little bit so that, you know, we, we all had the kind of the jarring start, kind of, I think there was sort of a lull there where it was like, man, is this still going on? And now we know we have to end the school year this way, right? So yeah. what can we do between now and then to make it feel differentiated and still good? You know, you know, I love my action plans or the action plans that we can try to create here. <laughs> Uh, I, I love that idea, um, and, and I'd love to hear from folks in the chat. What, what are some of the ways that you are, uh, closure is probably a, the wrong word to use here, but what, what are some of the ways that you are allowing students to see at least the end of their school year in a way through either an activity? It, it doesn't have to be a graduation. It doesn't have to be, you know, I've heard of all these virtual ceremonies that are happening, and, and they all sound great, but it doesn't have to be that, uh, you know, uh, put together, right? It, it can be a small video. It can be a, a, a small note. And, but uh, going kind of, I love to hear in the chat, one, but also kind of going back to, you know, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but Chris, may, Kristen, maybe I can come back to you real quick. You know, I, I want to talk a little bit about capstone projects, right? I don't want to overburden these students. They've already been through a lot, but could we talk about maybe some ways that even academically we could help them see the journey that they've been through this year, regardless of the challenges they've faced? Um, what, what are some ways that we think we could do that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Chris and I have talked about this a little bit, you know, in the last week or so, you know, what are some, some good ways that you can tie things up in a bow? And I think, you know, reflection is really important for students of all ages to kind of, kind of see, take stock, you know, what have we learned through this process? And what has surprised us? You know, we, we've asked that question of this group in our, in our webinars in the past, you know, what has surprised us most in this pivot to online learning? And, um, you know, the, the, the teachers that we interviewed previously, a lot of them would say, you know, I've been surprised at how well the students have done, or I've been surprised at how kind they've been to each other. 
um, you know, especially like in junior high where they're not always known for being the kindest and most supportive. And I think, um, you know, uh, kind of as a group to be able to acknowledge that amongst your students and help them see what you see in them, you know, regardless of what level you teach, I think this has been um, a struggle for all of us. And I think acknowledging that, whether through a formal project or a journal or a submission, or uh, I like the happy hour, <laughs> um, you know, trying to come together and, and make it feel okay that we took this crazy journey together, but we did it together. And I think, um, you know, that has been the hallmark that we knew starting out, right? That you are the best person to lead them through these times because you know them. You've spent the better part of the semester or the school year together. And when this happened, you, you know, stepped up and hopefully, um, you know, are, are crossing the finish line together, which is, um, which is crazy and amazing uh, that all of you have been able to do this for all of the students in this country. All right. Yeah, that's, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. I was go just going to add um, on the subject of, of capstone projects. It's okay to pivot if you haven't come up with something and say like, oh, I've got however many weeks left and it's no one's got more than a whole lot of weeks. Um, so it's okay if you haven't necessarily said, what the, what is that thing gonna be? You could come up with something now. Don't waste a good crisis, right? We, this was shoved on us. And so there, it in a way gives us more freedom to experiment. And I know we've talked about that in the past and not trying to take on too much, but as you were just saying, Chris, you know, like, what is this way that we can maybe step back, get out of the individual micro objectives again at this point and say, hey, what could, what could I have them do? When I was a management consultant in a previous life, we actually had training on elevator speeches. Mm -hmm. Literally, people acted like an elevator and said, imagine you get on a, an elevator with the chief executive officer of the company we're working for. And that CEO says, hey, what are you all doing here? And you have 60 seconds to say what the thing is. Mm -hmm. It was actually really good training, that extreme sort of summarization. Why not have our students do that? You know, maybe less is more. It's not about a huge, when you say capstone, it might sound like, oh, this is a huge thing. It could literally be, what are the three things you're gonna take away from the course and from this experience? Could be what are the two things what's the one thing and record that on a video and send it in keep it short can't be any longer than like make it a haiku make it a sonnet not literally <laughs> i mean more like the idea of a constraint can actually be liberating so i would think of capstone as like really focused yeah. and summarized yeah I, I like that and and in today's world it may be a tweet that a CEO reads, right? <laughs> like how do you design right. the best tweet? Uh, or maybe even a TikTok video. Uh, I'm sure uh, everyone's into that these days. Uh, but yeah, I, I see the, uh, the, the potential, the, the value in that. Um, I, I guess what I was trying to comment on is like, I, I see it in my own kids. I, I see it in the students I work with. Even with the AP tests, I don't know if you've fallen in the mm -hmm. news, uh, but students are taking their AP tests right now to try to get credit for all the work they've done all year. And, you know, I, I think you almost have this tendency of being like, like not really taking the time to think about what you've, all the things you've done this year. And all you really think about is this crisis you're going through and every, you kind of throw everything else out with it. And, and I want to, I think as educators, I, I, I want to make sure we take practical steps to avoid that, right? To really help students understand and, and ourselves as educators, uh, what we've been through. It's not, you know, this year wasn't just about COVID. I, I know COVID was a huge part of our, you know, changing our lives and, and just uh, our daily routines. But uh, I, I love that, uh, both your examples, both of what you're talking about. And then I just want to go to Chad real quickly and just really quickly highlight, you know, I love the journal idea you talked about, uh, Chris Werner, uh, and it looks like folks are doing something like a digital yearbook to mm -hmm. uh, have some kind of way to highlight what yeah. you've done, right? Um, the happy hour is, I think, a really great way to just spend some time reminiscing. And then um, I see a Bitmoji class picture and a Bitmoji recess picture at the end of your Netflix party. Uh, God, this is great. I mean, please keep it coming. I think everyone will draw upon these small ideas because, again, it doesn't need to be huge. It doesn't need to be a term paper. I remember back in health in high school, I had to write like a 100-page term paper. That was like 
<laughs> what you had to do. But that's, <laughs> it's not all about that, right? It's, it's sometimes about just reflection. And, and, and yeah, ahead, we're Chris, seeing this I, in the I know chat. You're wanting to get in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing the, uh, the two minute videos, the three minute videos, Vanessa, Michael, that's exactly what I, that. I was talking about. Love it. And um, I had a thought that came from, uh, I, I won't say how many years uh, it's been since I went to grad school, but the reunion was supposed to be this year, a big one. And, um, and we had a Zoom reunion. <laughs> And one, it was well more attended than the physical reunion would have been. And two, one of the people actually went outside the school, couldn't get in, but he, but everyone was like, oh, Carter, you're outside of, <laughs> you're outside the school. And, and he was showing with the video and everything. And he's like, you know, a security guard kind of chased me around a little bit, but it was something of like that moment was really meaningful. So I am not suggesting at all, anything illegal. I'm saying it, if your school is on a street, you could drive by and sort of selfie yourself. Like here I am back at the school. There was something really meaningful about like, hey, we're still all in places yeah. together. Yeah. And we're so disembodied and floating around. Like that was the place. And, and whether that's a live or a recorded thing, um, I'm seeing about the drive, the, the drive through uh, graduation. Something, the image of your school, I mean, I, I saw, you know, there was, there was someone in the chat saying that they, you know, seeing the, the, the frozen calendar and the items that were left behind, that was big. Uh, my, my kindergarten, my kindergartner's teacher talked about that too. So think about getting a shot of your school, of your, of your college, of, of wherever you, it is you teach. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and it I, probably says something when you have to preface what you're saying with, I'm not <laughs> suggesting anything illegal. <laughs> That'll be our Chris Ryan quote for today. Uh, but I, I just, just want to beat, and Chris Murray, I know you, you're, you're chopping at the bit here. I just want to say, I, I needed this, right? Like, I, I think, and, and uh, it's just really great to be able to talk about ways to uh, well, honor, is, is that the right word I'm thinking about? Like, a way to just... Uh, show respect, I guess, to the body of work and not let, uh, you know, a crisis like this really get in the way of learning or really get in the way of growth in terms of our students. But uh, Chris Munder, all you. Sorry. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when we, a few webinars ago, when we had interviewed some some teachers and, and presented some of what, what they said, um, one of the teachers talked about how this is uh, like a 9-11 moment in some ways for your students, right? They this is what they will live through and remember as being this crazy time where they had to stop their usual flow of things and things changed. And so all of the stuff that you're doing to commemorate this in a fun, special way will help them associate that with, man, it was crazy, but you know what? And I think in the same way that I think now years later, when we look back on 9-11 as a country, it's often that, oh, do you remember how awful that was, but how everybody came together and there were American flags everywhere or like, you know, whatever the sentiment was in your area, um, you know, like you, re you try to remember kind of the, the heroes of the situation and the, the takeaways that were positive for you as it kind of ages. And so as the, the scars of this season kind of callous over, um, you know, the takeaways that you're delivering for them, like, it was awful. My, my senior year of high school was not what I thought it would be, or I didn't graduate my undergrad, or I couldn't defend my, my doctorate in person. Um, you know, the things that you're doing creatively to pour into them will be the things that they remember and talk about later. Um, by means of another creative way to help them summarize things, we did an activity once to help with communication skills called an upgoer five, which, um, has has students or people we've done it corporately to uh, describe something not using the top thousand words in the U.S. vocabulary or English vocabulary rather, and uh, and it's amazing what words get sucked out of your ability to describe something. So you can make any prompt you want, but when you remove those words from uh, from the vocabulary, it becomes really funny and really interesting. And so that's another way for them to reflect on this year or as an end of project or how I've changed or how I've grown or, you know, what's the funniest thing about Mrs. Smith or, you know, whatever you want to come up with um, it has been a really great activity that we've used, not, not just as an icebreaker, but as later on as a, I know what this person does for a job. And when they describe their job and they can't use the word teacher, you know, they might use, I, you know, 
I do the learning with hand waving, you know, like, cause I'm excited all the time, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So I, I'm looking really at fun. Valentine waving hands, <laughs> smiling while learning kids real good. I, uh, as exactly. I, I don't know if you meant to chat that to just panelists, but maybe we can send that out to <laughs> attendees as well. That's so um, funny because uh, one of our favorite teachers here, his name is Eli. When, when we did this, he also had the waving hands and smiling while learning pretty similar. So yeah, um, <laughs> Eli's, Eli's great. Um, also yeah. Does wave I, his hands. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess with, we're 21 minutes in and I, I want to gently nudge us to maybe the next bucket that Chris yeah. Ryan alluded to earlier. Uh, I, I want to talk about reflection and, and maybe taking uh, a few moments just to talk about what we've learned and, and what we've gone through. Uh, but before we do, I just want to quickly sum up. Listen, uh, celebrating the end of the year can be a powerful thing and it doesn't need to be a uh, heavy lift. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It can be a video message. It, I'm, I'm reading in the chat here. It can be a physical card as, uh, you know, Chris mentioned last time around. It can be Bitmoji class photos. And, and creating an action plan for that end of year can also involve your students, right? Can, can you pivot your capstone projects that, uh, to something else, to something that really just allows students to maybe present, uh, submit a short video or present a, do a short presentation summarizing one or two, one to two or three things they've learned either in an elevator pitch style or uh, I think video format is actually really important these days. I think it's extremely important for students to get more and more comfortable capturing themselves in that type of format, especially as we move to things like video interviews and, and asynchronous activities along the line. And so uh, I think this will help students really remember the hard work that they've gone through. But now, can we talk a little bit more about the hard work that all of you went through to get here? Um, who wants to kick us off? Can uh, either of you can jump in here to talk a little bit more about reflection? I'm, so, uh, I, uh, I'm gonna actually, uh, Chris, I know you've got some great thoughts on this. I am, oh. <laughs> I, I defer, you go, you go first. Well, I, I just would say, and I've heard you say this, so I'm, I'm repeating what you've said, Chris, but um, that, that you all were charged with, with making this adjustment for our society. Um, and, and, and no one had planned it. No one was charged with making the adjustment more quickly and with more pressure than you all. So um, you've, been, you've been the hands of society and, and delivering... The, the new thing. Um, and so it was absolutely a triage situation. So in one sense, you, you've always got to look back on any kind of situation like that with self-compassion and with a grain of salt about how, how much you want to apply from that. So I would say, you know, look back on choices that you made back in March, back in April with, with it's sort of with some, I would call it try to find some equanimity and some self forgiveness <laughs> as you look back on what you, what you might've chosen to do. And also to say like really clear eyed, Oh, if we had to do it again, we would have done that differently. So it's, it's one thing that I saw recently about resilience is that you need to hold both positive and negative emotions in your brain at once to be resilient, both, uh, the negative of like whatever the, the hard thing is because you can't just avoid it and also a positive emotion around i i believe that it's all going to work out right we talked about that before so here it's like looking back on what happened as you reflect you want to kind of ha straddle that balance as well look back with both uh sort of clear eyes at what went well and what didn't and with some forgiveness for yourself and compassion. So I'd love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. What, what kinds of things would you say you learned from the experience? Yeah, I absolutely love in the chat that the, the first one is adapting, right? And it was hard and I'm sure it was. Like it, it, online learning is different, right? And I think one of the best pieces of, of advice and, and as somebody who, who studied adult education online <laughs> in depth. Um, the best advice I saw that came across the professional groups that I am a, a member of was don't try to become an overnight expert in online distance learning theory. 
because that was not the time to do it was mid-March in the middle of a crisis, right? You know, any more than, you know, you, you try to cram in, you know, how to triage anybody medically, right? When you hadn't been trained, like it is something that, you know, online learning oftentimes is engineered over a long period of time and designed to be so. It is um, different by design uh, for online learning and especially tailored for the audience for which it will be, um, you know, delivered. And I think this group, um, you know, teachers and professors across the board were put in a situation that was more than uncomfortable and proved resilient, right? Even if it didn't go the way you thought it would, and even if it wasn't the way even you had hoped it would be, uh, the resiliency and the fact that you've persisted is important. And I think um, everybody is trying new things, right, you know, to this point. And I think collaboration, I hope, was a part of your journey, too. And I think, um, you know, as you have the availability to debrief with your colleagues, that will also be powerful because the shared understanding of what went well and what did not will help inform the decisions you make going forward. And you know, it, it, to the degree you have the ability to influence that, but certainly within your own sphere and your own classroom, when you learn of whatever is going to happen in the fall and you start making plans for that, you know, you're fundamentally different as an educator than you were 12 weeks ago, right? Because you have been stretched in ways that you didn't know would happen and you rose to the occasion. So then what do you do about it now? Looking back with Grace to Chris's point on what, what has gone down <laughs> with you yeah. and your students and in your classroom and in your living room and at midnight and when you have kind of had to figure out how to pivot, um, you know, what have been the great takeaways and what have been the things you don't want to replicate Share that with your peers, surface that knowledge to your administration um, and your leadership and see if you can make positive change so that as a contingency plan or as a primary action plan, whatever it has to be in your district or in your campus, um, it can be better next time. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I'm looking at this chat and, um, you know, Michael says you'll disappoint some number of people, no matter what you do, change is hard. Uh, flexibility and patience. And uh, Katie, it's a great article that you posted. Thank you for posting that. Um, let me ask this in a different way, because uh, I, I agree. Every Plus one to both of the things you both said, and, and I really want to stress the self-forgiveness angle. I, I do think um, we, we mentioned this before, we are tough on ourselves, and that's also why we're here. Uh, but this is a safe space. So I do want to ask the question a little bit differently. Uh, uh, I want to ask you, looking back, let's activate that growth mindset. What would we have done differently? Is there anything that could have been done differently? I, I, I think this is a safe space to have that type of discussion. So filter it in the chat. And if you want, you can just chat this one, just the panelists, if it's something you'd rather not share. And that's fine, too. Um, but can I ask both of you if going back, uh, if there are things you would have done differently or that yeah. maybe we could have done differently? I know, you know, less is more is something that comes to mind. I wish maybe we would have stressed that even more so potentially. Um, and it's it, I, I, the one thing I would say that I would throw out there's a sort of a provocative point might be what. What would you do? Not that we had a crystal ball and, and it's very easy to look with 2020 hindsight, right? But going into this crisis and, and in the first couple of weeks, realizing things are way up in the air, how much were we still trying to hold on to the old way of doing things? And one aspect of that could be, we were still trying to do more as more. <laughs> we were still trying to hit all the points and find the exact correlation and the exact matchup. And what we know happened with our students and, the, and families uh, in K-12 situations too, is that they got overwhelmed. There was no one manager for them before. All the sort of like <laughs> balance that our students have around them of how much they were having to do, suddenly in the online synchronous learning space, from afar in the best of circumstances, more constrained, and yet we were trying to do the same amount of stuff. Yeah. Maybe we should have taken more of a clean slate approach. Yeah, I, 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 man, Michael said he would have cut non-essential content sooner 
you know, and, and hard to admit what is not essential. I completely agree. Uh, and then recognize Zoom fatigue. I think both of those comments match very closely with what you're saying here, uh, Chris. Uh, and, and Denise concurs. Zoom overload was overwhelming. And, and maybe we've learned that not everything needs to happen synchronously. Uh, you know, maybe there's, uh, you know, we have to use that power of bringing everyone together from their homes uh, sparingly uh, to really get the maximum effect of what we're trying to get across, really be intentional with our purpose and planning. And again, let me be really clear. I'm not saying, I, I don't, there's no way anyone would have had the foresight to be able to know that, you know, I saw earlier, you know, we went home on March 13th expecting to come back over the weekend and then all of a sudden it was all gone. Um, and so, you know, that kind of rapid transformation, no matter what, um, is going to require us to make some snap decisions. But that being said, I, reflection is important. And, and again, I think it's important to take from the tough times that we went through what we can take with us to really help support us and our students in the future. And, and maybe that's the point I'm trying to make. Don't just throw it all away. The same way you went through it, there are very, very valuable things you'll be able to take with you. Um, Chris Murner, maybe you can jump in here. I, I, I just want to make one last note. I, I love the comment around, um, you know, there was a teacher who mentioned that their uh, fifth grade students, uh, it was Denise, with learning disabilities were actually thriving because they had no one to compete with but themselves, right? And, mm -hmm. and they were able to get shout outs. Is there a way to continue that thriving atmosphere, even if we do return to school in the fall, we'll get to that later. But, you know, like, what are some of the positives you've seen and how could we uh, accentuate that or, or highlight that along the way? I, those are the things that are going through my head right now. Uh, Chris Murray, I don't know if you, I, I can see you wanting to. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, and I saw there was another um, qu question in there about how to help with um, you know, social skills and emotional intelligence when we get back, you know, it, since they've been, isolated for so long. And I think, um, you know, as we talk about planning for return to campus and things for fall, um, I'm going to put a pin in that and get there. But I think, um, you know, the, the skills that you have learned are absolutely transferable, right? So the fact that you now have thought about this, and, and I really appreciate, um, let's see, it's scrolled up here a little bit for me. Um, Eric, uh, you're talking about, you know, I wish we had talked about a hybrid learning, like this could have been an earthquake, you know, that was uh, regional and would have affected, you know, particularly your individual students the same way, right? And I know um, my, my daughter is doing student teaching as an education major in Georgia and her kids all had, um, you know, they've done remote learning via, via bag, right? So they don't have tech access in her, um, in her district. And so, you know, they had bags week by week that they would use for hurricanes and natural disasters like that. But again, not a comprehensive what happens if we have to shut down and do hybrid learning, you know, from now on. And I think, uh, you know, there have been colleges that have been a little bit better prepared, right, because they have big LMS systems that, you know, faculty have been housing presentations on and things like that. But for a lot of faculty, you don't have to raise your hand and admit it, like, you know, you did it under duress, you love the classroom, you put the stuff up there because your dean said you had to, and then all of a sudden it became, oh, you, you, you mean I have to teach through that too, and all of my things have to go there, and it's the only way I can interact with students, becomes a very different kind of approach, but you did it now, right? And, um, and I think even the smaller districts where it's been a real struggle technology wise. I know I live in Vermont, which is has really poor broadband access. And it's been sort of a delivery by school bus with meals and with, um, you know, rural kind of handouts and different things like that. Um, you know, it's going to force some very tough conversations on how do we make this better? Should it have to happen in the fall or ever again? And I think the contingency planning aspect is one that, you know, we would all be wise to kind of uh, follow up on uh, as we look to return to school this fall. Um, I mean, we're going to have to, certainly this is lingering longer than any of us wanted it to think um, that it would when it started. But, you know, I, th I think that's part of it, uh, you know, is, is you've risen to the occasion, you have the skills now, you know, um, I think not, not necessarily by way of transition, Dennis, but, you know, maybe it wasn't time to learn about distance learning theory in March, but maybe over the summer, some lighter online reading, which we'll put in the blog post for this week when we send out the recording, um, we'll put some resources in there for some lighter reading 
uh, the Cliff Notes version, if you will, it kind of dates myself, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, but Spark Notes, Cliff Notes uh, version of things that you can learn that are actionable tips to um, to think about. You know, when you have to do this again, or if you're creating classes for the fall um, as a backup or as a primary way of learning. I, I love that. I love that. And and uh, I, I would just again say. You know, what I want to make sure it's clear is when we think about what will we have done differently, what we mean is, again, acknowledging online learning is very different from classroom learned uh, being forced online with little time to plan. And we'll, we'll definitely, again, as Chris Minner mentioned, provide those resources and, and be self-compassionate as you reflect on this question. I'd also ask, you know, what did you learn as an educator in terms of, like, what surprised you? Right. And if you want to throw some stuff in the chat, I would love to see it. And uh, maybe even conversely, what was reinforced? What was confirmed? Uh, and and, you know, hybrid learning uh, styles. Uh, you know, I, I think there's so much that's we've how do I put this? I, I if there's one real bright side to all this is that we've been really forced in a way to get outside our comfort zone to really be able to try to reach our students in a different way. And I'm hoping there's a lot that we can take away from that as we think about, you know, the coming years. And, and that, that's my regret that we kind of had to react to this rather than uh, being proactive. But again, who knows or who knew that we'd run into something like this in our lifetimes um, or, or maybe something uh, you could debate that, I guess. Uh, but um, that being said, I, I, I love the segue to talking about next year. But before we do, uh, and I want to give a little wrap up of this reflection section, but before we do, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the comment that uh, Denise made about, you know, not stepping away, not shutting down the computer. And uh, we warned about this. We warned about, you know, that blurred line when you're at home and trying to do all that you can for students and feeling guilty and they're not doing a lot and you feel like you can, you have to do more. And uh, in fact, this week's, uh, next week's blog is going to be all about being able to re recharge yourself, right? Like uh, Katie, you know, who is in the chat, is going to be putting a blog together, a post on that and giving you some really good tips. Uh, but can we do that just for a few minutes, have a little fun moment here? Uh, what are you doing or planning in the chat to recharge yourself once the school year is over, right? Uh, Chris, any, any suggestions, any thoughts? Like they, they've earned it, right? Well, or or for those of you who have already wrapped up the year or just about like, what do you have on the docket? I mean, I hope it's away from screens. I hope it's away from lots of people. <laughs> I hope it's yeah. with your family, friends that in some kind of shape. And I hope it's somewhat outside. Um, what? <laughs> and ice cream. Yes. And you've got great ice cream in Vermont. Yeah. Cowboy mounted shooting. I, I love that, Stacy. Going to the oh. beach. Well, as long as we're social distancing and, and following guidelines, uh, furniture painting projects. Uh, M Michael, be more specific. What's a non-technical hobby that you have? I, I would love to hear it. Uh, <laughs> the beach comment was uh, very well received. Uh, hiking, getting a kayak, uh, building furniture. Picking. I love seeing the, the couple of furniture. There's something, one of my... Um, when I was uh, teaching physics and chemistry at the high school level, my department chair built cabinets. There's something really just like anchoring about working with wood. And so I'm terrible at it, but yeah, <laughs> maybe that's, that's, I think there's something real there. I think also it's important for many of us that are parents and been teachers of them plus teaching other things that those relationships get nurtured, right? Like step away from the computer. You're not teacher mom anymore. You're, you're just mom now, which is plenty. Um, and kind of rebuilding that. I'm not going to harass you about are your assignments done. I'm not going to be on you about, did you check in with your teacher this morning? Like, we're just going to, you know, sleep in and have brownies for breakfast, you know, or whatever, and just kind of, you know, turn it really full on to summer for a while. You know, this is unprecedented and you guys had less of a break than many people did. You know, we, we kind of joke around here because we have worked from home for a long time and people say, oh, to me all the time, oh, well, you were used to this. Uh, no, 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 not really. Um, <laughs> not used to it with my whole family home, not used to it with a global pandemic uh, occurring around us. Um, you know, and I think, 
it's really important to, to acknowledge that it's, it's hard for you. You deserve the break. It's been hard for our kids. They deserve a break. Um, you know, my kids think they should get out of mowing the lawn. That's not going to happen. But, uh, but we certainly will be trying to make some purposeful time to not be near screens for, for a while. And I love, I just want to, uh, Brittany, you wrote in decluttering house and yard sale. That was I love my it. favorite. Let's Marie Kondo. Let's, <laughs> let's, you know, it's kind of like what sleep apparently is supposed to do, partly like it flushes the toxins. I can't even describe this physical <laughs> space I'm in or the rest of the house. Like, you it's know, true. it's, it just like, so, so take some time to declutter. Yeah, all I, it takes is a few weeks of working from true. home and you realize just how cluttered everything is or how easily I, uh, things pile up. I, uh, that was fun. That was great. That. Uh, please keep it coming in the chat if you have them. Chris Murder, I don't know if you wanted to. Uh, no, I, I shared a, a, a cartoon that had been making its way around social media and it said, we're all pretending. And it was a Zoom back of somebody who's working just like me with like pictures on the wall, looks so great. And the office is just a disaster all around them and the camera can't <laughs> see it. And I literally took a picture of my office and sent it to one of my coworkers. I was like, um, way too relatable because there's stuff everywhere in my office. I haven't had five minutes to look at it. So I appreciate the decluttering conversation. I need to, to take some of that advice. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. There must be something good about that. Uh, and then, and then you'll see all the things that piled up, right? You'll see all the objects that you weren't able to really uh, devote your time to, and and think about the significant relevance. Uh, it's like pruning content, Dennis. Like you have to teach the important stuff. I have to keep the important stuff in my office. That's right. I, I like that. I like that. Okay. On that note, that was fun. Um, I want to switch this over, but to quickly recap, uh, be proud of yourself. Right. This. This was a lot and you made it through. So congratulations. Uh, reflect, you know, what went well, what could be improved? Uh, we'd also suggest debriefing with your colleagues and supervisors. Uh, if you can find someone you can be very open and transparent with, that always really helps to, uh, you know, kind of talk about all those things. So collaborate and, and help one another. We're, we're all in this together. So again, think about what surprised you, what was confirmed, and what can we take away? You know, yes, we went through this with a, not by choice, uh, but there are definitely learnings that we can use in the future. Uh, but on that note, I, I want to hit you with another poll. Um, for those of you, uh, you know, I, I want to ask, has your leadership communicated any plans for the fall? Uh, I, I would love to hear uh, the situation you're in because uh, we've talked about this, we've all talked about this, Chris Murner in particular, about, okay, let's say we get through the rest of the year, for some of you already have, you get that r and you clean the house, you sell everything, right? You only have what you need left. Uh, you do some baking, you make some for new furniture, now that you've sold the old, right? And, uh, and now you've got, you know, the summer or how much, however much time you have to really think about how do I, how do we really get prepared for a world where, you know, we don't, we don't know yet, right? But, but maybe we can do a little bit more thinking. So, so what are the top questions we should be asking ourselves? Maybe, maybe that's where we can gear uh, our fellow peers. What, what are you, what are you, what are you two thinking? Right. I think, um, you know, not knowing what format the school year may take makes it a little hard, right? Um, you know, it's, it's hard to believe all places will be business as usual, you know, it's, it, especially places that are more impacted than others. And I think, you know, we've talked about it even as a group with our, um, the folks that, that help us on the podcast uh, or in the webinars here. Um, you know, it looks like most of you still have no idea. I think, I know my area is still very much in that camp and um, and it, look, it looks like some of you are yes online only. I'd be interested to know is, are you guys college or are you K-12 that are in that online only boat? Um, and then what are your deadlines? Those of you that have deadlines, I'd be really curious to hear because we'd really like to be sure that we're also serving up the right information to you guys and scheduling these around, around that time so we can help um, as we move forward. I think, uh, you know, it, it seems like everybody's gonna have to have online backup plans. That seems like kind of a, a thing that's gonna happen, right? So, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, you know, I did anyway that, you know, kind of reading up on some of the things you could try or, you know, kind of figuring out what, what tools might be useful, what are new, um, new resources, new tech, new things like that, that might be 
helpful for the, you know, whatever level you teach for your kids moving back this fall. It'd be good to kind of read up a little bit on that as you start planning ahead. And then, um, you know, looking online at contingency plans, um, you know, taking that reflection of what you do differently and trying to kind of, you know, remediate those areas a little bit. So it's a better experience for you. Um, you know, maybe also looking at really time boxing. I, you know, I saw some more, you know, folks saying that they were really overwhelmed by the fact that this consumes your life when you work at home and it really is an adjustment. And I think if you're going to have to do it long term, I know for me, it was very hard first at first, you know, you're available all the time. Um, there's no reason you can't work a little bit when your kids go to bed and when, you know, you're all alone on the couch and that gets to eat up a lot of your mental space. And so being really careful about time boxing and, and really being good to yourself and planning for that or it won't happen come fall if, if we're forced to do this again. Yeah, yeah. Chris Ryan? Yeah, what, 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 yeah, I would like us to think about, and I challenge each of us to think about, what does the bag look like? I'm thinking of your daughter, Chris, um, you know, with, with her students having no access to technology. And so what, do, what would that weekly bag look like, even if we can't, even if we don't have to do it? I think that will help us, like the physical bag that you would give your students each week, what might that look like? Let's think really hard about that over the summer, because that's going to help us close the digital divide. And mm -hmm. it was raised in the chat a few mm -hmm. times about mm -hmm. like, and, and, we, and, and Chris, you were talking about it, the, the you know, the, the rural nature of students near you, et cetera. And this is across the country. And, and so what would our bag look like if we had to send it home? And that's going to help us even if we have the most technologically enabled and we've leveled up in our online synchronous and asynchronous learning. There should also be a physical component. And I would say that's true pre-K through graduate teaching. Mm and everywhere in between, we need to have a physical component that is away from screens to the learning experience that is kind of self-guided. Mm. What does that look like? I don't know. There are pieces of it that people are coming up with, but what does it look like when it's coherent for your, your class, your courses, your students? What does that look like? Yeah, I, I, really, I really like that. Go, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I, I agree. I think that's really, really important. And I think kind of going back to touch on the question about the, the social interaction piece and the, the how do you be kind uh, to students in a physical classroom when it hasn't happened for a while, especially if you have younger learners in your classroom, that's going to be really important to kind of reintroduce those social norms, which may be very abnormal still when we come back. You know, the the pictures that have been circulating online about uh, school resuming in China where the students have plexiglass around their desks and they're wearing masks. And, you know, that can be frightening if you have younger learners. And I know I saw guidelines out of our state that said, you know, children over two should be wearing face masks. And I'm thinking about my children when they were two and three. Um, I had two that would probably be compliant and one that probably would not have been. And so I think it's going to be a real adjustment on a lot of levels. And so I think really thinking carefully about how to design activities that are both safe and appropriate um, to reintroduce that sort of school norm when it's not sitting in your jammies in front of a screen when they're younger. Um, for older students, it'll obviously be a little, little easier, but still I wouldn't underestimate the fact that it's very different uh, than it was previously. There's, you know, there's no way it's going to feel exactly like it did last August when we all went back to school. And I think um, you know, just kind of being really cognizant that the activities that we design um, aren't the exact same ones that we would have done in August last year, maybe, right, that we're making more concessions. We're going to have gaps in knowledge for sure. We're going to have gaps in, um, in a lot of things, and, and especially for students that are not sheltering in place with safe family members, like it, there's going to be a lot of work to be done by the counseling groups and, and things like that. And I think we really need to be aware of that and conscious of that as we're designing and kind of looking to see, you know, it's going to be a lot of formative, what do we have to work with when we get back to school this fall? And I think giving yourself grace again, forward looking and planning and not again, taking the lessons of pruning the content, delivering the priority stuff, taking that lesson, applying it to the fall, planning a little less than you might've planned for last, last fall, and giving some buffer time to just reintroduce students to being together and kind of that space for making relationship with you so that you can help 
help direct the students that need the most love to the people who can give it to them, and then um, really establishing those norms to move forward in the school year. Gosh, I love it. I don't know why I'm here. That was actually a perfect. Uh, let me, I'm going to take a moment to try to even simplify down even more what I heard, right? So first off, what I heard from Chris Ryan was the need to time box, right? To set clear guidelines and rules around what you're doing at home uh, for yourself and what you're doing at home for work. And, and I think that's true, uh, no matter what your profession, if you're working from home. So uh, that's definitely something I would write down somewhere and remind yourself to commit to find a plan, right? And set rules and follow them. Um, secondly, what I've heard from a lot of you in the chat and from both of you, Chris and Chris, is the need to prioritize your content, right? And, and we heard from Michael that it's hard to kind of admit what's essential and what's not, but you're not gonna be able to do as much. That's just the reality. Uh, you, you're not gonna be able to uh, cram things in. And in fact, that can be uh, worse for uh, the students. And so uh, really taking your time over the summer to think about what your goals are what your priorities are, and uh, no matter what the situation, what are the things you want your students to take away, and how are you, how are your students going to show you that they were able to take those right things away? Those are the kind of things we're going to need to think about in our activities. And then uh, in our activities themselves, we can't assume everyone's going to just jump on Zoom or, or uh, submit a video. And, uh, and apologies if that was the feeling you got when we were suggesting that earlier. Um, sometimes we'll need them to draw a picture. And, and find a different way to submit that, either through hopefully their camera phone at the very least. Uh, but if not, maybe there's another way that they will be able to do that. We'll need to be really thoughtful about maybe some of these activities they will never submit just because of the divide and, and they'll need to, we'll need to trust that we can give them a really clear self-guided activity so that we can bring the physical, so we can, uh, Chris Murner, to your point, uh, really allow students to engage with this content uh, in the, with the material in a thoughtful way, uh, regardless of whether you're there physically or not. Maybe this wasn't that simple of a summary. Uh, but, and then lastly, I, w I, you know, I think it's really just about, you know, again, just give yourself and your students grace, meaning uh, you know, we talked about time boxing, we talked about thinking about the activities they're presenting, but um, they're going to need more than just educational support, right? And I think you put it best, Chris, right? Like, everyone is going through so much, and we're all here in this together, and we're trying to support each other. And maybe in the summer, we can think a little bit more about how we can do that even more so, make that even more intentional, and, and, and let that make some be something that students can really see from you as well. I, I think I talked about this a couple uh, webinars ago, how my son continues to watch his teacher's encouraging video over and over again when I'm, you know, when he thinks I'm not looking. And, you know, it's those little things that really can make a difference and help us push forward. Uh, how do I do guys? Anything else? What, what, we're almost to the end of time. So this may be time for wrapping thoughts, but Chris, Chris, I got, Chris, I got go one ahead. thing. Um, yeah. I, don't, I think maybe I mentioned before Michael Pollan, uh, this author about who talks about food, has this little like seven word thing like eat food, mostly plants, not too much. And uh, for this, I'm uh, around the, that physical and how do we get people to really give space? I would say read, have your students read. I used to teach physics and chemistry, but. Uh, what are the kinds of ways I could assign some readings from, oh, Richard Feynman or a Nobel Prize winner or others that give sort of a human side to the science that are especially useful at this time? Think about ways to center reading and reflective writing, because that's been the power for centuries, for millennia reading and writing is at the heart of what we do. And then you add some math on that and you get the three R's, right? So how can we really get reading? Cause that can reach everyone. I, I love that. I think that fits perfectly. What I think is the theme for today's session, which is let's get away from screens for a little while. Uh, on that note though, I would love to give you both some final thoughts. What, what are your final takeaways for all of us as we think about, again, wrapping up the school year strong and how we can, uh, um, and we're not there yet. We'll be back to talk a little bit more about the summer, but really in that, in that kind of theme, what are your last thoughts? 
Chris Murner, you want to kick us off? I think, I think one of the biggest things is, is the theme of grace. We keep coming back to that, right? That, um, you know, it's, it's, again, you know, we, we used to, when we first started these, we were talking about that we're, we're all in the same boat and it's a little bit of a leaky boat, you know, and, and we're, we're just doing the best we can. And, um, and at this point, the, the boat's still floating, right? You know, and I think, um, you know, wrapping it up is, is one way to put it. But I think, you know, this has been quite an experience. And I think, as we've talked about acknowledging that both for your students, because you're teachers and you're focused on them and you want them to feel good about this year and kind of make the transition to the fall, um, that's fantastic. But please, uh, you know, take a step back and acknowledge the fact that you were able to do all of this as well and, um, and really be kind to yourself. And I think, um, you know, with a little bit of more breathing room between now and the fall semester, there's no way that it won't be better feeling, right, for you. It'll be better for your students. You know, you never step in the same water twice. And I think, um, you know, you've now been here before. You're much more experienced. It was not <laughs> the way that anybody would have chosen to enter it, um, but you've rallied, right? And I think, uh, you, you know, marking the end of the school year is really important for your students, for yourself, and then really, um, you know, lean into what you've learned and, and take away the best parts of that uh, and apply them to next fall. There's no way it's, it's not gonna be better for everybody. That's awesome. Chris Ryan. I jumped in there with the read thing. If I have one book, How to Do Nothing, <laughs> Resisting the Attention Economy. I, I don't wanna just promote this book, which I, I have no connection to this book, uh, other than it's, it sort of celebrates that space to stand apart, we're gonna need that. Even if it's only from a like utilitarian point of view, like, oh, it's gonna recharge you for the next battle. Yeah, but in and of itself, take this time. The themes will come to the fore. Um, so, and and I, I wanna go ahead and speak for all of us uh, that from over here at Kaplan that we're really grateful to you. Uh, your first responders, um, you, you have been and for our for our kids uh whether they're six or 16 or 26 or 60 all the sixes um you've you've been there for them and so thank you yeah it's better than your other book i don't condone illegal activities right chris Ryan? uh no i'm kidding uh everyone thank you really take care of yourselves make sure that you are celebrating we're almost there for many of you. For some of you, you've already made it. Let's think about and reflect and find a way to keep moving forward. Thank you again for your time, your presence, your communication, and the solidarity. I, I, it's, this has been great. I needed this. I hope this was helpful. This is Dennis and the Chris's once again signing off. We'll see you again soon. Talk to you all later.